Hello and welcome back to EuroFootball Daily's UCL Review. We've got a bumper show lined up for you today. Joining me is Joe Tomlinson and we're going to start with Spurs 1, Man City 0, Joe. Yes, a huge result Massive. for Tottenham Hotspur on their debut night in the Champions League at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Well. Obviously, Son getting the winner a 1-0 victory over arguably the best team in Europe right now in Manchester City's Pep. I know you're going to talk about, in Pep's Manchester City, I mean, you're going to talk about them yes, a little bit later. That was Sonny's 18th goal in just 40 games this season. Uh, Spurs have now won 13 of their last 16 home games. Obviously, that's split across two stadiums. We have to, though, give big, big credit to Hugo Lloris, don't we? Obviously, saving Sergio Aguero's 11th minute penalty. Do you think it was a pen? Uh, under the current rule, yes, but I think the rule is stupid. Okay, I... because you can't you can't bring your arms within the natural you know bit of your silhouette. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's a bit of a difficult one, but under the rules, it's definitely a yeah, penalty. Yeah, it's yet. just like Kimpembe. It's just like Man City. At, well, yeah, Schalke as well, I yeah. completely agree. I think on the night it had to get given just for consistency's purposes. I thought it was a terrible pen though yeah. by Sergio Aguero. Comfortable for Hugo Lloris to save. He's now saved all three of the penalties he's faced in all competitions in 2019. So he is on fantastic form as a Tottenham Hotspur. For penalties. For penalties, yeah, because as a general goalkeeper this season, he's actually been okay, but he's made some howling errors. Yeah, I think he's second in the Premier League for errors leading to goals yeah. behind Pickford. Uh, no, I think even more than them now, Begovic has now overtaken oh, really? he made two on the weekend. Right, okay. So I think he has now a race to be the overtaking them. Before we move on to the rest of the Tottenham Hotspur section, if you are new to this channel, please do hit the subscribe Welcome. button, hit the notification bell as well whilst you're there. <laughs> uh, let's move on though to the rest of the Tottenham section because I think they stifled Man City really effectively. Pochettino got his game plan as right as Pep got his wrong. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I thought Musa Sissoko was fantastic on the night. I mean, to limit Hugo Lloris to only having to make two saves, really shows how good they were defensively. And you know, Pochettino has had some huge results in the Definitely Champions has, yeah. League over his Tottenham Hotspur career. They've beaten Dortmund four times, they've beaten Real Madrid once, they've also drawn at the Bernabeu, they've drawn at the Nou Camp, they've beaten Inter Milan and now Manchester City at home. Given that they spent zero pounds, I think it's arguably one of the best achievements of any manager over the last few years. His performances in Europe and to get top four with such a limited budget. Considering the circumstances, and a, yeah. And a midfield of Harry Winks and Moussa Sissoko. Winks also had a really underrated game last yeah, night. Yeah, well. I mean, it's very tidy. It's a pretty good omen as well, that result for Tottenham Hotspur last night. They've progressed to the next round on each of the past nine occasions in which they've won the first leg of a European knockout tie. Great That's record. Excluding qualifiers. That's a fantastic record. Obviously, one black mark on the night. Harry Kane picking oh, up nasty another ankle injury. It's obviously plaguing him over the last few seasons, those dodgy ankles. A fully committed tackle, I think it's fair to say. Fabian Delph leaves one on him a little bit, but maybe not deliberately. Yeah, I'd say it's a, it's a, a, a harsh, it's a coming together at speed. I don't think it was nasty, but it, you know, it looked incredibly painful. Yeah, I mean, that's his fifth ankle injury since 2016, which is not a good sign. But they do really have worrying. Sonny, who seems to fire more when Harry Kane's not in the team, and he plays that slightly more central yeah, role than when Harry's definitely. in the team. Either way, Pochettino obviously extremely concerned about that injury after the game. Here's what he had to say. It's so painful, but what we can do now? It's impossible now to only to look, look forward and try that it's not a big issue and, and try to recover it as soon as possible, but it doesn't look uh, good. But obviously, after the defeat, much of the criticism was aimed at Pep Guardiola. He started Delph, although he didn't really have much option in that respect. Zinchenko's out injured and Mendy's not fully fit, although he did play that game against Brighton at the weekend. Aguero started, didn't look his normal self, mm. I didn't think. Um, wasn't as busy as, I think he only had three shots, wasn't as busy around the box as he normally is. And he left KDB and Sane on the bench until the 88th minute. Shocking. Uh, and in fact, when asked about why KDB was on the bench pre-match, Pep had some pretty shocking things to say. He said, De Bruyne is rested because he is not as good as Del David and Ilkay in these big, mo big moments. It is simple. Which is big, big words for arguably their best player of last year. I know he hasn't been quite at the same level this year, 
but he's obviously battled through massive injuries. And if I was Kevin De Bruyne, I'd be Pep. What, what are you saying? I what more can I do? That. I cannot believe that. You know, Pep is obviously synonymous with protecting his players in the press. You've obviously probably seen the Amazon documentary where he says, I will lie to the press, but I'll be honest with you behind yeah. the scenes. In this case, I think that's a really weird quote and it makes it look even worse because I think he got his team selection totally wrong. Yeah, and especially night. weird timing, given that De Bruyne provided a, an assist at the weekend against Brighton as well. Um, but obviously he started 60 million pound man, Mares on the right wing, and he really didn't have a great game. Uh, zero tax and interceptions, and he was supposedly brought in for his more defensive solidity over Sane. Uh, one dribble, two key passes, one block shot, yet only replaced after 88 minutes. And to say he's predictable is a bit of an understatement. Oh. Um, Joe, you, I know you think he's not quite up to this level. I don't necessarily agree with that because he had that great campaign with Leicester City in the Champions mm. League. But he just didn't look... He just He's struggling for rhythm at the moment, I think. And he just hasn't looked himself since the turn of the year, I think. I think he played quite well at the start of the season, but less <coughs> so now. Um, I, think, I think the trouble with Mares is he is like a real individualist. And he, he went at Leicester... He stands out above the rest because he is the star man. Yeah. At City, he's just another cog. And I don't think he's good enough to play in a Manchester City team at this level. Really? I I've, really don't. So do you, would you suggest getting rid of him or...? I don't really know what you do now because you've paid, what do they pay for him? 60 million. 60, maybe even more than that, I think, in the end. 60 million plus yeah. um, for a player that... If it's a choice between him and Sane, you go with Sane every day of the week, in my opinion. And that is not good enough for Mares, who should be having more impact on games than he did last night against Tottenham Hotspur because he's just totally ineffectual when you know what he's going to do. He's going to come back into that left. He's not Iron Robin. Stop trying to do it. Yeah. So he does this little shimmy. Oh, there goes the wobble. He's coming on his <laughs> left. Shock. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's worrying times. We're talking <coughs> about worrying times for De Bruyne after those comments. It's worrying times for Sane as well, not getting enough games this year at all. Um, but you can almost see why Pep started Mares in some respects. He scored once and assisted four in the Champions League this year. That's a joint best in the side. Um, but the decision ultimately backfired in this game big time. And this result continues City's awful record against English opposition in <coughs> Europe. They've lost all five of their matches, including three in the Champions League. Wow. And they've been knocked out in all three previous Champions League knockout matches when they lost the first leg. And it seemed like that the sort of ghosts of Anfield last year were coming back to them. So they obviously got battered at Anfield last year. Mm. And it seemed like Pep, <coughs> I've never seen City set up so defensively. And it ultimately didn't, didn't work in the slightest. I mean, it would have if they scored that penalty. It's ifs, buts and maybes. But I thought City were just so flat throughout. It was really, really confusing. Uh, and Guardiola's now got a pretty terrible record in Champions League away knockout uh, games. So his last win in a quarterfinal or semi-final away from home was in 2011. That's eight years ago. Eight seasons. Phil Foden back then was in junior school. Absolutely mental. He's just coming out of his nappies. Uh, and his overall Champions League away knockout record reads, <coughs> played 26, won six, drawn 10, lost 10. Get a load of that. Um, and despite conceding 13 shots to 10 with four on target from Spurs to their two, Pep argued that City had the better of the game somehow. Have a listen to this. We, we control the game and... And we play, we play quite good. So we will see, we will see next games, how how we are going to change a little bit or not. To you know, to try it with our people, with our fans, at home, with our families, and we will see. So just before we wrap up this game, I've got some key performers for you. We've got to give some credit to Kieran Trippi. Had a slightly shaky start against Sterling, but really eased himself into the game. Seven tackles and interceptions, one dribble, one aerial duel, one two key passes. Musa Sissoko, who Joe mentioned, had a great game I'm statistically real. as well. 97% pass accuracy, five tackles and interceptions, two key passes. I've never known a turnaround of someone's, you know, form and standing in a team as much as Musa Sissoko. Hey, this is another Pochettino piece of wizardry. You know, he turns any fullback he gets his hands on into well beaters. He's now done it with Musa Sissoko. Musa Sissoko. It's crazy. I mean, we're talking about. Spurs needing to really rebuild that midfield this summer, but I don't. It's going to take a lot of work to shift Musa Sissoko in this form. Uh, but man of the match once again was Son Son Heung Min rather. Four tackles and interceptions, great great work rate from him. One dribble, four shots, which was a game high. Two on target, which was a game high, and obviously that crucial winning goal. The return leg is a week tomorrow. Can City still win the quadruple? Is what we want to know from you. 
vote in the poll above. Moving on to the other game that happened last night, Liverpool versus Porto Dukes. Yes, the Reds overcame Porto, who are actually second in the Liga Nosh at the moment on goal difference to Benfica. 2-0 at Anfield, not a surprise. Porto have never won away against English opposition in 20 matches. That's 17 losses and three draws. And that continues the Reds' fantastic record at home in European competition. 21 games, 15 wins, six draws. They will be tough to beat in this year's competition. The game as a whole was dominated by Liverpool. However, they might feel that a third might have really sort of killed the game. And we were sort of expecting after their 5-0 thrashing yeah. last year that it would be a similar sort of result. But um, Klopp obviously took off Mane and Firmino in the second half and brought on Origi and Sturridge. And you really think, I know they've got that big game against Chelsea this weekend, but they really could have gone for it, I think. Yeah, I think if they'd have scored a third or a fourth, as we were kind of expecting them to, because they scored so early as well, you know, yeah. fourth minute and what was it, like 30th minute, something like that. But the next 60 minutes, one more goal really means you can rest players in that away leg. At 2-0, Porto get an early goal. It's that sort of, oh, that's not a nice yeah, thing to play strong players. I mean, they've got some quite, quite dangerous players as well. Musa Morega had a reasonable game as well. And Alex Tellez, as the dead balls are, you know, lethal. Mm. Um, the Reds only managed three shots on target, the same as Porto on the night. And they finished with an XG of 1.6 to 0.8. So it was a deserved uh, victory. Um, Morega actually missed four good chances on the night, a match high. Um, and it was a slightly odd result, as Joe mentioned. They start in a flash, two goals in the first 30 minutes before slightly tailing off. There was a moment of controversy, though. Mo, Mo Salah, with a pretty nasty-looking challenge mm. over the top of the ball in the 80th minute, uh, left his studs on the defender's shin, and VAR wasn't used which I thought was weird considering, you know, the amount of times that they have brought VAR into, you know, various situations this season. And I think if it had gone to VAR, he'd probably be sent off. Yeah, I can't believe VAR didn't intervene. I think it is a red card. Obviously, he's not meaning to stamp. He's trying to step over the ball and use his body across him. But he goes over the ball and puts his shin, he puts his foot midway up the defender's shin. I don't see how that's not a red card. Yeah. But either way, it didn't happen. And uh, let's hear what Klopp had to say about the game afterwards. It was a good game, it was a controlled game in very in a lot of moments. Um, we deserved the win 100 percent We had um, we scored two wonderful goals were in a lot of situations really dangerous, I would say, right on the right um, side especially. As Doogie mentioned there, one big positive for Jurgen Klopp will be the ability to take off Bobby Firmino and Sadio Mane last night, rest them up for the Chelsea game because by the time Bobby was hooked. He had already done the damage yet again. His Champions, Champions League, League beast. He's a Champions League fiend, mate. Yeah. Obviously, the only player that's been directly involved in more goals in the Champions League since the start of last season, I believe, is Cristiano Ronaldo. Incredible record. He's been involved in 24, which is insane in itself. But he himself, Firmino, has been involved in 21, which is pretty impressive. And his former Anfield in Europe is even scarier. He's got 12 goal involvements in his last 11 games. So if you're playing away at Anfield, expect Bobby to do damage against you. The other man who scored on the night was Naby Keita, his second in as many games, obviously, scoring his first ever Liverpool goal against Southampton on the weekend. And that is a massive bonus for Jurgen Klopp that he's finding form at the right time of the season because on the night he was ridiculous. Ten tackles and interceptions. Ten. Ten tackles and interceptions. Three dribbles, two chances created and obviously that goal taking home the man at the match award. They also have the brilliant Allison to thank for yet another clean sheet. Uh, in fact, in the Champions League, he's kept the most clean sheets of any goalkeeper since his debut in 2017. Great Especially That's considering nine. his half-lap spent at Rome. I know, nine clean sheets. I think five of them came at the Stadio Olimpico, four of them at Anfield, but all nine have come at home. Okay. He's yet to keep a clean sheet away from home in the Champions Hopefully League. Hopefully they'll be hoping for that. They'll next week. definitely be hoping for that when they travel to Portugal. Either way, I think Liverpool have probably done enough to get the job done in Portugal. I don't see Porto keeping a clean sheet, and that's yeah. what's going to come back and bite them. Morega missing some massive chances on the night, I'm afraid to say. For me, Liverpool are going to breeze through in the second leg. Either way, you know, nobody's going to watch it because it'll probably be on the same night as and Tottenham City. And they've so. probably got Barca next. Yeah. Um, all right, relax. <laughs>
So that was all we've got time for on UCL Review, two fascinating games we've reviewed there for your pleasure. What's happening on FD, Joe? Yeah, come over to Football Daily tonight about 7.30, 7.45 sort of time because we are doing a live stream for the Manchester yes. United versus Barcelona game. It's me, Confident. Zach. Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> Look at that face. I don't know what to think. I actually, I actually have a little bit inside me now, I'm quite confident. No. But equally, we're going to get blown away. Absolutely blown away by Messi, aren't we? Rashford, though. Messi, um, Smalling. But yeah, me, Zach, Sam and Mikey McCubbin are on the sofa watching the game. Swat. So come and join us at about 7.45-ish. Cheers, guys. See you next time.